This video is going to quickly walk you through some tips on how to set up a green screen to anchor at home. So one of the most challenging things about anchoring from home is that you don't have all of the lighting grids and all of the things that you have in a normal TV studio. Um, so this video is gonna walk you through some things that you can do to kind of work around um, those challenges. So first things first, this is our green screen. And um, before you just go ahead and start recording video with it, you want to make sure that it is as smooth and even as possible. So you'll see there are lots of little creases and wrinkles here um, that we are going to want to steam or iron out. So I actually had this, this steamer and I, I went ahead and just steamed like this portion of it, um, but then you see the rest is really, really, really wrinkly. And the problem with it being wrinkly is that it actually creates um, different colors or different shades of green, and that can be really hard for Adobe Premiere Pro to perfectly key out. So you wanna give yourself the best chance of, as possible of, of editing this afterwards, because when we put this into Premiere Pro, we're gonna tell it, remove this green color everywhere behind the anchor. Um, and, and then we're gonna replace it with like a layer of the Tampa skyline or a TV studio. And we wanna make sure that that keys cleanly. So one way to get a clean key is to make sure that you iron or steam um, that green screen and also build in enough time because it does take some time to set up um, and also just to move stuff around. So uh, as you might see, <laughs> my stuff has moved all over the place. I pushed my couch up against this, um, this window back here. I moved uh, tables and furniture out to the other side just to get enough room to actually set all of this up. The biggest reason is that you want room between the anchor and the green screen because if I'm right up against this, you'll see some really ugly shadows behind me and that's gonna do the same thing as those wrinkles are gonna do, which is gonna make it a lot harder um, to key out cleanly in post. Um, so first things first, iron or steam your green screen. Next, do not wear green on camera if you're anchoring in front of a green screen. Even like this shirt here, um, it might not be the same shade of green. Uh, so it might not 100% key out, but like pieces of it will, uh, will key out or, or just not look good. So no green on camera. Make sure you're wearing something like black, for example, is a good camera for a green screen. And also iron or steam your shirts that you're wearing so that you look professional and that we can air it um, on uh, the TV stations. So beautiful ironed steamed green screens, beautiful iron shirts. Uh, the next thing that you want to do um, is uh, is set up your lights. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these lights off so that you can see what they look like. Um, I actually have an additional light besides for these little uh, three-piece kits that we have here. And that is the light that's coming in through these windows behind me. So I picked this location because um, I could get all of this light. And normally you don't want windows in your TV studio um, because you want to control the light. But in this instance, I need as much light as I can get. So I made sure that my face was facing the light, the light's not behind me, um, because then I would be too backlit. Um, so this will really help um, if you have a window, if you have any other source of light, specifically if it's diffused through glass, that'll help even out some shadows and make it a lot nicer. Um, it'll also help with uh, your green screen when it's keying out. So first I set it up so that I could be facing this window or this source of natural light. The next thing you wanna do, um, some people will close their blinds or make it all dark to set everything up correctly. But in this instance, we're gonna light pretty evenly because we're not trying to create any kind of dramatic cinematic look. We're trying to look pretty neutral um, so that it matches our, our virtual set. Um, so first we're going to set up this backlight. This is lighting the green screen. I would love lots of lights on the green screen, but right now we just have this one. So I'm gonna test it out with this. One of the good things is that on this specific light, we have the ability to make it brighter, sharper, or less, less bright by just turning this knob on the side. And I felt like it was really bright because it's like light green in the center and dark green on the sides, and I didn't really like that. I would have loved another umbrella or something. Um, but for now, we're gonna test this one out. 
Um, we have our, our key and our fill lights here, and normally one would be brighter than the other, but in this case, we're going to do it a little bit differently because we want it to kind of be even. So I'm gonna turn this light on. As you can see, it's facing the umbrella. Um, and it's gonna reflect all that light onto my face. So I don't want that harsh light casting shadows. This light over here is gonna go on and do the same thing. It's gonna hit that umbrella. The light's gonna bounce back onto me and uh, look uh, way prettier. It's gonna look smoother, more even. And it's also gonna allow my camera to record a uh, much higher quality video. Um, so right now I have my three lights ready to go. Um, I wanna make sure that my audio is actually recording. So this is a big mistake most students make is that they'll plug their microphone um, like into their phones, for example, um, and uh, either into that phone or into like a, a phone that I have in my pocket and uh, they'll think it's recording uh, because they might see these audio waves, but it, it might not be. So you wanna like either tap your microphone so that you see those spikes in the audio waves or maybe move it farther away and closer. Um, oftentimes this is gonna be something that trips people up in post. So make sure to always check that your audio is actually recording. Um, and, and then when you set up your phone, you're going to want to set that up or whatever camera you're using in between these these lights here so i have my my cell phone that i'm using um, and i would love to use the rear facing camera because it's higher quality um, the front facing has an advantage that you could use a teleprompter on it so you want to test all of these things out you definitely want your grid lines on so that you can make sure that you're centered and that everything's even and you can adjust all of those in your camera settings um, it also helps you see the difference between the light if you have any like hair that's sticking out or whatever. Um, but ordinarily, I would, I would really love the uh, rear facing camera because that, that can go up to 4K in a lot of people's cameras nowadays and that's gonna look a lot prettier. You have to decide that depending on how much script you have to read. So if you're anchoring a ton of readers in a row, it might be tough to do that without a teleprompter. Um, so we'll talk about all of these things that might change um, your decisions. Um, something else that is important to know is that when you set it up, the green screen doesn't have to cover the whole um, screen because we're actually gonna mask the anchor out. So it's okay that parts of my screen here are falling off so I can see the mess that's on the outside of my rooms. As long as the green is all the way around the anchor, you should be in good shape. So I want you, before you start recording um, your scripts, to test all of these lights out. So you could, for example, turn this one off and see if that one's better. Sometimes it is. I know it's better to light your green screen, uh, but in my instance, I was getting like keying through my hair and stuff, and there's lots of weird stuff that happens. So you wanna record a couple versions, put it into Premiere Pro, try editing out the background to see the lighting condition that might be best for you and your home. Um, and same with these lights here, if they have a dial on the side that changes the uh, brightness, um, that's great, or you can move them physically farther away or closer to you to find that right balance of light um, that will help create definition, but also not create shadows. Um, so those are a couple of things to keep in mind. You also wanna make sure that there's no noise, no air conditions, nothing that's like moving the green screen. Um, and I look forward to testing all of this out with you guys. And uh, it's gonna be really exciting to see how we use virtual sets um, to work from home this semester.